Did you have an indication as to what part of him was hurting at that point? The first thing he was complaining about was his leg and knee. We, rule, uh, we rolled his bottom leg up and his knee had contusions on it and it was starting to swell. He was complaining about it quite a bit. Did he make any effort to walk or did you guys tell him not to? We told him not to. He has, he was in a lot of pain. We don't want to take any chances because we didn't know how bad he was. Other than the leg and knee, do you know if he had any other pain that he complained of at that time? Not really. He was just in a lot of pain in his knee. He didn't really say his knee was his big concern at the time. Did you take a look at the hole in an effort to try to decide whether that was something that had been there for a while or was fresh or could you make any judgment on that? Not really. I would say it was not fresh. And you do recall there were other holes in the bottom of the car, but you don't recall how many? No. Would there have been more than one? There was more than one. What was in the car? Obviously, in the photograph, there's a bunch of wood and stuff. Do you know what that is? It's just dunnage that was left over from a previous loading. And it was common, I gather, to have some of that in the bottom of the car? Yes. Was it fairly common to have the holes in the bottom of the car? Not that unusual. Were the kid kind of cars that were in use there, were these double car things for, I believe, 80-foot rails? Was it common to have holes in the bottom of them? Yes. Had that been a fairly common thing for some period of time? Yes. Do you know how the holes got in the cars, or have you seen them knocked in the bottom of cars? No. So you don't know how they got there, you just know it was not infrequent to have them? Some did, some didn't. For the men working around these holes, obviously they were somewhat hazardous, I guess. Were there ever complaints to you about holes in the bottom of cars before the accident of Joe's? Yes. In your capacity, I guess, as foreman, general foreman, when you got complaints about that, what did you do? Well, depending on what the extent of the complaint was, I mean, if it was just passing, hey, you ought to go check that car out. The decking is kind of bad. You could go over there and visually look at it yourself and see if the complaint was genuine. If it was a continued complaint, if the decking was genuinely unsafe, you would first instruct the people that were working in that area to make sure they knew it was in that condition. At times, I made contacts to the shipping clerk to make sure that they made contact with someone at B and R. What would the clerk say? Just general sales statements. We've got foreign cars. These are domestic cars. We get cars in all the time. The decking is not the same on all of them. It varies. That's the condition of the cars. That's the way they've always been. What about the B and R cars, the domestic ones? Do you recall making complaints about those to anybody? Yes, at times. We've complained about a lot of situations on the cars. What are the situations? We've had situations where the cars were deteriorated to the point where the loading was no longer safe, so we had ordered the cars. Would that include domestic cars that belonged to B&R at times? Did it include some of the double car rigs? The only time I've ever remembered us back ordering a domestic car is if we had a real bad problem with, like, maybe the springs being broke or the articulation coming loose, something that would make a very unsafe and unstable load. As far as the decking, I don't remember us back ordering one because of decking. You do remember complaining about it and talking to the shipping clerk about it? On all the cars, not just one specific one. Including the third? Yes. When you back order, when that, what that means is you say, hey, the thing's got to be pulled out of there, it's not fit for loading, that condition could arise, yes. From safety, could it not? Yes. What other reasons would there be to back order a car? If we felt we would not stabilize a load, it would possibly damage the product. And of course the safety, if the deck wasn't there, you could get in so we wouldn't load it. Did you ever talk to anybody besides the shipping clerk about that problem? I made some calls at times to the B and R, talked to various people, no one in particular, just to let them know about the car situations, mostly on foreign cars, mostly on foreign cars. Did you do it sometimes with B and R cars? Very seldom, but I did.
Totally. Yeah, it's off, yeah. But it was uh, 205. Mike, can we skip, skip that one? Mm -hmm. Mr. Gold? Right. Yeah, skip it. That's fine with me.